And that's the reason we go to real food because our bodies know what to do with real food. Baited unless you're wanting or training for something, then you need to weigh out macros and micros if you're really honing your body for a competition. But what people expect is rules. Yeah. Right? And they expect this to be really strict and that's why they don't want to do it. What you're doing now is you're liberating me, yeah. you know, right? And probably everybody else listening to this, like it doesn't have to be torture. Yeah. They're Welcome. Uh, this is part of a three-part podcast uh, we shot previously. I sit down with a couple of guys I'm really proud. I got a chance to talk to, I learned a lot. Um, uh, from Jose Moresma and paramedic lieutenant AJ Breen, both come with extensive um, history and credentials in exercise physiology, nutrition, life coaching, and just overall uh, holistic performance. And we, we cover a range of topics that probably we've never touched on uh, in our organization, but I'm happy that we're finally having these conversations. I got a lot from it, I learned a lot, and I hope uh, the same will be true for you. So sit back and enjoy. I've given you a scenario about, you know, I'm a guy working to 48, I'm starting to have some symptoms, right? I'm tired, I don't have the energy, don't feel like working out, diet's kind of poor, sleep is horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and you said, well, and then and I talked to my buddy AJ and he says, we well, probably got low T. I go to my doctor, right? Tell him I'm, I'm not feeling good, he prescribes me tea, I get on it, but I don't really have the results, right? And I'm trying everything I can, maybe yeah. it's pellets or whatever. Yeah. The first piece you said is get your head right. So I, I gotta go there first. Okay. So let's get to the diet and exercise. Right. At the station this morning, I'm gonna have, what am I having for breakfast this morning at the station? 99% of the stations, uh, it's traditional. All right. When I, so that? everyone knows, I mean, I shouldn't say everybody. Eggs? If you say traditional here, yeah. eggs, bacon, some sort of pork, uh, <laughs> potatoes. Fried potatoes. Yep. With that, that's the only way to eat potatoes. If you're going to eat them, it's fried. Right. Yeah. And it's in the good stuff, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. You don't, fry, you don't fry an avocado oil because that no. burns off too quickly. Right. Uh, and, uh, and chili. And that chili Red usually has, uh, it's a mix depending on station. But it's going to be either or, right? Yeah. That's our traditional breakfast. That's traditional. Uh, some kind of to tortilla or bread or something like that. Uh, most stations and cheese. All right. Yeah, most stations you got to like. Of course. The handful of cheese that has to go over everything. It's delicious. And then a traditional plate, you just... <laughs> Mix it all it together, all and cut it, and you know. It's, Absolutely. It's good. Then lunch, we're gonna hit somewhere probably. If you eat lunch. If we eat lunch. Most stations lunch. don't eat lunch. We don't cook it, and no. if you go out and get it, you, you may, but. Yeah. And then for dinner, we'll have whatever. So in all that, it's food, and you, you said it's what you put in your mouth. Yeah. So let's start there. Okay. With diet. Yeah. All kinds of keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, what do you do? Ha <laughs> ha. That's what a great. Yeah, yeah. That's tough. It varies from person to person. Yeah. It really does. I, I agree. Um, so I begin, like for me, when I'm coaching somebody on nutrition or their diet, it's the first thing is eat real food. That would be level one. Like make sure that you're not eating processed foods. Can you define real food? Like yeah, what is that? things that rot, things that, you know, things yeah. that are fresh. So meat, eggs, one vegetables. Word. Yeah. One word. Yeah. You know, you, there's, you look at the packaging and there's one word. One word. Eggs. Or broccoli. You know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading the label of some fake eggs that, that are made in Canada, and it's got about 15 ingredients yeah. in it, and a lot of them are processed ingredients with some crappy oils and uh, yeah. just junk, that, that guar gum, you know, these, yeah, these sure. additives to thicken it up, as opposed to an egg. Right. Like you said, it's yeah. an egg. An yeah. egg you can't duplicate. It's nature makes it, and our bodies know what to do with it. And that's the reason we go to real food, because our bodies know what to do with real food. At that point, we could have variations. I mean, you mentioned a lot of styles of eating or right, diets right, right. and so forth. And, you know, things like keto are very popular right now. The reason it's popular is that finally uh, the science side of nutrition has admitted that, hey, we can't keep revving our blood sugar all the time. And for years, we told people off of a false premise that we, the foundation of our diet was going to be grains, right? We we're going to do all these grains because they're inexpensive. They fill you up. And there's a perception of nutritional value there. 
is a high glycemic index. Yeah, but they, they, they're in reality, grains are tough for us to actually digest. Uh, traditional grains were always fermented, right? So they would, they would leave them in water and let them kind of break down so that mm -hmm. all their protective shells were broken down. That's how people used to eat grains. We don't do that anymore. Or sprout, we yeah, have, sprouted. Yeah, we yeah. have sprouted yeah. stuff. We have instant everything. Yeah. Like if you're eating instant oatmeal, it's sugar. It's pure sugar with yeah. very little nutritional value. You don't have a bunch of nutrients in there, vitamins, minerals, you know, all the things that we need, protein, fats. So this whole, you know, people laugh at the whole gluten allergy thing. Yeah. Um, Cause they think it's a kind of a new, I don't know. It may, it may legitimately be, <clears throat> and I don't know enough about it to speak on it, to, to say it is or isn't, but I would say that the fact that it's kind of surfaced over the last two decades. Yes. I think that it's a newer issue because not necessarily because we're eating grains, but because 99% of our grains are genetically modified yeah. to keep up with production for the loud, like the large quantity that we need to produce. So you don't think Nailed it's necessarily it. that we don't digest grains, but the way we genetically with, modify with, everything, I think it's different. Probably I, with not. GMO, yeah. So product, we've messed yeah. with the natural environment, right? We mess yeah. with those. And I think that has a lot to do with it because yeah. the ones that are genetically modified by definition are going to use pesticides and we won't name any companies or sure. anything, but that's a combo package that comes together. And so a lot of the belief in the research side, because Harvard's done a ton of studies and they basically have seen pretty much 100% of people that they test have some sensitivity to gluten. What is gluten? Gluten is protein, right? But it, it, it's not an abundance, but it's a protein within a lot of grains. Yeah. And so we've attached to that because there are serious, or there are people with serious gluten allergies that we call them celiac disease. Right. In fact, my mother had celiac undiagnosed. I'm 100% sure because how do we know? She had a distended belly. She was thin and trim, but she had a distended belly, always had intestinal issues. And what it does is, you know, our intestines have cells that should be real tight. And what happens, our body breaks down the food substances and they get to a small enough particle size that they can kind of go in through the intestinal wall into your bloodstream. You eat things that disrupt it like sugar. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it's gluten or processed garbage. It starts to irritate them and they open up. And now leaky. these big chunks, you get leaky gut. Leaky gut, gut. Yeah. yeah. And you get these big chunks of things inside your bloodstream that your body sees as um, like an dangerous. Antigen. Yeah, yeah. 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 And an so antigen. now you have a response, yeah. an antigen response, an yeah. inflammatory response because your body's got to get in there and break it down. So now you have systemic inflammation that's going everywhere that your blood flow goes. And tell me how that would manifest, like let's say day to day. Foggy Once brain, foggy brain. Joints hurt. Okay. Feeling sluggish, mm -hmm. low energy. Those are things that you're going to see. And like I said, the Harvard study showed that pretty much everyone has some sensitivity and the researchers really do think it has to do with the modernizing and in industrial crops. And it's different. Uh, I've had the personal experience of going to Europe where they have a lot more laws around the modification of their food and they don't have genetically modified things. And I can eat, you know, a nice brown bread with some butter. I don't have any... You know, yeah, inflammation. Well, and you and go it, to Europe, right? And the, don't they have the greatest amount of uh, centenarians? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. People who live over a hundred years old and, and they eat grains. Yeah. But they're grown in a very different style. They're so the regulations are probably more, uh, yeah. more stiff. So, and they ferment them. They like sourdough yeah. breads and yes. those kind of, those are traditional ways of eating food and they don't seem to bother people. Right. So and you then, guys said real food. Yeah, real yeah. food. Whole food, right? Mm -hmm. um, Much like Jose, if I help somebody with a nutritional diet and they're like, I want to lose 10 pounds or whatever, first of all, I tell them, well, let's not like focus so much on the scale. But let's start with eating whole food. And yeah. so when I write a nutritional plan, it's all whole food. Uh, fruits, so I don't have to eat chicken bears. and broccoli every day? No. No, that gets really boring. I mean, you're not going to be very <laughs> successful yeah. with that because eventually you're going to get sick of chicken and broccoli. Yeah, but I mean, when people are trying to get in shape, this is what you typically see, right? It's yeah. the bodybuilder workout. Yeah, it's it, it, been it, around it, it, for it, it, 20, 30 yeah. years. Probably yes. people have been doing that thing. It's mm -hmm. like chicken and broccoli, yep. chicken and broccoli. <laughs> so we don't have to eat like that to have a good solid diet? No way. No. Um, so t what else about diet? Well, am I to avoid dairy? What things should I avoid? Because I, don't people, think so. I think people get afraid to diet yeah. because there's a lot of rules and they think there's a lot to know. Yeah. You know, you talk about weighing out your macros, your micros. 
Is it is it that complicated? I don't think it's that complicated unless you're wanting or training for something. Then you need to weigh out macros and micros if you're really honing your body for a competition. But I don't think, and, and Jose, quick, correct me if, if I'm wrong in, in, in your thought process, but if you're just trying, yes, you want to be within a certain caloric window. I don't think you need to be like, hey, eat whole foods, but eat 5,000 calories. Well, no, because you're still going to put on weight you don't want. We still have to be in a calorie deficit. If you're if you're looking to, sure. to tone or be healthy, you still have to manage calorie intake. It doesn't matter if it's whole food or not. If you eat too many calories, even healthy food, you're going to add weight. So even if I'm want. not documenting everything I eat and weigh and, and weighing my food, I have to be conscious of how many calories I'm putting in. Yeah, yeah. you yeah you you can't be you can't just like be, say I'm going to eat healthy nonstop and then and then you know be like. One of the hard things is people say, I'm eating healthy, but then you watch them pound fruit, you know, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to put my, my driver on blast on my rescue wants to eat healthy, but man, can't, he can't stop eating fruit. And I keep telling him like, yeah, five, six bananas. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, the fruit has fructose, fructose in large amounts. We've shown that fructose in large amounts can be more harmful or uh, is more harmful to the body's uh, cardiovascular system than salt. But it's something we don't really talk about. If fructose is really hard for the, the body to break down and can actually cause arterial and atherosclerosis. It can cause hypertension. And, you're, and people are like, well, I'm eating fruit, tons of fruit. Uh, fruit. And, and that's well, a perception, but, right? But that, those are things you have to, everything is good in moderation, right? Almost everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Almost, Almost everything is good. That's no, I, I thank you. I'll say, yeah. Cause you, yeah. <laughs> I don't want anyone to be like, well, AJ no, said yeah. things are good in moderation. So uh, I'm going to expand on that yeah. a little, because I think you're, you're right on. I'm going to go back to what you said last time we got together is okay. uh, you experimented on yourself. So some of this is being aware of yourself. So where mindfulness comes in that you're yeah. actually listening to your body. Yeah. Um, let me do a quick story that might help contextualize this. I've taught a lot of mindful eating courses for uh, the University of New Mexico uh, Integrative Medical Clinic. Um, I had a woman that came in and she started the class and, and one of the first things that I teach people in mindful eating is notice how your body feels after you eat something, right? Notice, be introspective, notice, notice, does it feel good? Does it feel bad? Do you have distress in your stomach? What is it, you know, does it give you energy? And so she got into this and she realized that she had this intestinal distress that had been going on for a long time. She ended up realizing that she had a dairy allergy. In her case, she mm. couldn't tolerate dairy. She went to the doctor, they test her. She has a severe allergy to dairy. She removed it, all of a sudden that was gone. And she said, I didn't realize that I'd been living with this for years because I kind of ignored it. I yeah. wasn't listening to my body and I just thought that was normal. Yeah. All of a sudden we remove this food. I feel great. Relief. Yeah. Yeah. So listening to your body with what you're eating, because some people are going to tolerate dairy a lot better. Some people are going to have more trouble digesting certain meats. Um, you know, that's, that's true. Uh, grain may affect yeah. you. I don't know. Right. It's the individual. And yeah. you're saying, I'm eating real food, but I still feel bad. Right. Well, like, start listening. Yeah. Listen <laughs> now are you, yourself. are you more of like, um, intuitive eater where you just eat when you're hungry or do you have yes. program three times a day, 800 calories a meal or whatever? Yeah. So it's a combo of that. Um, because we have a sophisticated system biology that actually tells you if you're hungry and you need something, or if you're satiated, most people's systems are, um, signaling systems are broken because of all of the processed food and the sugar. And so now we're doing this with our blood sugar all day long. And so you spike your blood sugar, your body has a response by trying to lower it. It usually over lowers it because of the response. And then you're hungry again, yeah. right? And then, then you overeat and it's kind of the cycle and you're not listening to the signals. If you're eating real nutritious foods, those signals are a lot more clear. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And so what about, you know, there's these debates, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I didn't have breakfast this morning. The Kellogg's but. brothers invented that. Is yeah. That right? Yes. Yeah. That was a that was just a myth for marketing. Yeah. Now, is it? Could be for some people. You, you might have individuals that wake up and they're like, if I don't have food by eight o'clock, 
Yeah. I'm not functioning correctly. Yeah, I got to eat. Yeah, and that's I okay. I get up and eat. That's your body. But maybe you're done by four or five. You in, know? Yeah, in the evening. Right. And there, and yeah. I, no, I really like that because it's not. And then, you know, some people say, well, your largest meal should be lunch and then a small dinner. Now, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to agree with with that eating in the evening for somebody that's not on a, on a 48. <laughs> right. Because that's going to be different. Um, if you eat too much within a couple of hours of going to bed, you're going to disrupt your sleep because your body's going to prioritize digestion. Over, yeah, over right? And so now your body can't do all the things that it needs to do in sleep, and you're probably going to have disrupted sleep. Digesting is one of the most difficult things that your physical body needs to do. All right. Think about it, breaking down food and then rebuilding, using that food for rebuilding your body. Okay. And that's biologically demanding. Yes. So it's nice that if you give your body some time to do that before you go to sleep and then in sleep it can repair itself and do the cleaning of the brain and all those things that, that we need, the compiling of memories, all that good yeah. stuff. So right. I think not eating in the evening is a great idea. And it ties into that circadian thing that we were talking about. And some of the emerging science and diet is really emphasizing <coughs> um, eating with the sun, right? So. A lot of people are eating more breakfast now. The, so intermittent fasting has, has been a big thing in diet. And yeah. I think that is legit and it's a very important conversation we can have maybe about, you know, intermittent fasting. Do you guys intermittent fast at all? I try to go 12 to 14 hours. Yeah. Yeah. In between. Well, in yeah, yeah. And usually it's like, <clears throat> I try. Yeah. Some, and, some and 12 is a good others. number, right? Yeah. So don't eat for at least 12 hours a day. Yeah. That's and a pretty you good do number. All of your eating, like in two hours, in a window, like some, yeah. A and window. usually, so a twelve-hour window seems to work okay. Ten hours seems to work okay. Uh, a lot of the programming says do it in an eight-hour window, right? Um, and you don't even have to do that every day. Uh, what the study shows that if you have like an eight-hour window twice a week, that's significantly better for your inflammation, your body mass, all those good things. And tell me the mechanism. Why, why does that work? You know, what? Because when you're not eating, you're uh, allowing your body to be in autophagy, which is uh, the Greek word basically means eat yourself. Catabolism. Yeah, yeah. internal. But what yeah. it's doing is your body's actually cleaning and repairing cells, so pairing them if they're damaged uh, or replacing them. I think you. This is where you blew my mind last week, yeah. because uh, you know, g growing up in the weightlifting world and bodybuilding, and everything's all about anabolism, and yeah. uh, and Jose's like, no, if you remain anabolic all the time, your body never has time to clean itself. And I was like, yeah, you just like flipped and my entire here's eating what, philosophy on its here's head. Here's what's clear. <laughs> is that if you're eating this way consistently, right? Consistently yeah. good, yeah. it spares muscle. There are mechanisms your body wants to protect your muscle because yeah. a lot of bodybuilders are very scared. Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll tell you, I'm well, losing I'm, my atro gains. Yeah. I'm losing atro my gains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you, yeah. you got to eat big to be big. So here's yeah. the thing. Um, you know, we have yeah. pre-workout meal, post-workout yeah, meal, yeah. all that stuff. I actually, a lot of the science doesn't validate that. Think about it. As hunter gatherers, we didn't have food all the time, and you had to have active muscles and a very sharp mind to go get food, yeah. right? To figure it out. Yeah. And what they've discovered is, if you eat within that hour after training, you're actually reducing your gains, because one of the things that happens when you train is your body produces more growth hormone yes. and more testosterone. Well, the second that you eat, guess what? Those start going down very quickly as opposed to if you let them just keep rising and it and they'll rise for about two hours after a training session, you wanna allow your body to be flooded with all that growth hormone because that's gonna be the trigger to actually build new tissue and all that stuff. We are turning the wider principles yeah. of bodybuilding upside down. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Oh, and again, it's- Some of the uh, Joe Weider? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah the those, are, those are like people who Bodybuild and lift no, live no. by those rules. Oh, yeah. and, and so to say, well, hold on, don't eat for two hours after you uh, lift is like, that's heresy. Because normally you want to <laughs> lift, you want to throw a protein <laughs> shake in That's what afterwards. they say. Yeah, I still uh, live by so that. So wait an hour. Yeah. Wait, okay. an okay. hour. wait an hour. Let that rise come up because you're blunting some of your benefits. Yeah. And then even the eating before. Now, if you're going to be out on call and you're yeah. in action, I say, yeah, go ahead and eat. I don't, that. yeah. 
I don't. I cannot eat before a workout. And yeah. It'll ruin a workout. It'll for ruin me. a workout for me yeah. too because now your body is fighting. Yeah. Right? It's like, do I digest or right. do I deal with right. this other stress that's happening? Well, that's my workout. And that's why everyone's like, I don't understand why I throw up. And I'm like, well, are you eating before I work out or before you work out? And it's like, well, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so when your body's in extreme distress, does it want to handle the stress or does it want to digest? If it doesn't want to digest, it'll shunt blood away from your gut. Totally. To, to fix the problem, which I'm like, if you don't have blood blood going to your gut, what do you think it's going to do with everything in there? It's going to bring it right back up. You got, got a bomb in your stomach yeah, you that's going to blow. You yeah. got to get it out of there because you can't digest it. Right. Yeah. So, and yeah, you don't need a, it. Yeah. You got it yeah. on, on. In fact, what you want to do is you want to force your body to release fat. And that's one of the benefits of exercise, yeah. right, is we want our bodies to release fat when, when we break apart. So the average healthy, normal weight person holds about um, – 100,000 calories in stored body fat. That's like a normal weight person. In all other stored energy that we have in our body and glucose and glycogen and so forth, and we have muscle glycogen, then we have liver glycogen, you've got less than probably seven, 8,000 calories stored, right? So that fat's real important. Yeah. We have a mechanism where we have a demand, uh, we need blood sugar, our body will actually break apart or release triglycerides. Those go to the liver. The liver breaks them up apart into um, fatty acids, right? So just, just a uh, single fatty acid. But that bonds that hold together triglyceride, they're called glycerol. They bind and create glucose. Yeah. And so our body, through gluconeogenesis, makes its own blood sugar. And we need that if we're chasing a buffalo or whatever sure. or, or, you know, going on call. And... Um, I've found by eating this way, I never have energy slumps ever. And I can go 15, 16, even 20 hours where I've been so busy and I still don't get a slump. Even if you're not using caffeine or any kind of stimulant? Yes. It's, I'm, I'm ready to go because my body is flexible. It's called metabolic flexibility. It Did will it, tap into all of its fuel sources as needed. Did it take your body... Like, was there an acclimation yes, period? Yes, two to three weeks is okay. what happened because it was a decade ago that I started this. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest experiences I had is I wouldn't eat breakfast. Okay. So this was new for me. I would have my coffee and so forth, but I wouldn't signal insulin. I wouldn't eat anything that would make my body have to produce extra insulin. So even your coffee is probably black then, yeah? It's black, but I put um, heavy whipping cream in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's rich. Yeah. It tastes good. It's so fatty no that sugar. it doesn't – Yeah, you don't really need yeah. – insulin to process it so, okay. and, and I because I need that I don't put sugar in it that's that's my personal thing but some yeah. people can even afford to put a little sugar in there um, or a little honey or whatever okay. again you don't have to be you know kind of depriving yourself yeah just don't overdo it but what happened is I would go train at lunch and uh, 10 years ago I was doing a lot of deadlifting and kind of CrossFit workouts which I really was enjoying at the time and I got dizzy uh, the first times I started doing it. And yeah. That lasted about two weeks. Okay. And then all of a sudden, I remember that first day I went and did that hard workout and I was like, wow, I feel awesome. Yeah. My body had pushed into more flexibility and that's not stopped in a decade. Good. So and I will you train, I'll go two hour bike rides with yeah. nothing on my stomach after fasting for 12, 14 hours. And yeah. I will be as energetic as everyone I'm riding with. I have no slumps, no bonks, no nothing. So when would you have your first meal? Um, so typically, so right now what I typically do is my first meal is somewhere around 11 and my last meal is around five. So about six hours, that's what I do. And it's pretty easy for me but you to do it. You don't eat anything else after five o'clock. I don't eat anything else. Cracker, chip. I'm not even hungry. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, not, it's not a hundred percent. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'll get hungry. Or something like that. Yeah. And if I do, it's usually like eggs and bacon or something. As I say, if I eat late, I it's try to make fatty, it protein based. Yeah. Protein yeah. fatty based. That's what I want because it doesn't require that much yeah. insulin to yeah. process. What guys, about you? When would you take your first meal? The guy, um, I, it depends. Some mornings I wake up and I feel like famished. Yeah. It'll be eight o'clock in the morning and I'm like, ah, I need to eat. Do but you then, eat? Uh, some mornings I do, some mornings I don't. Okay. This morning I felt super hungry. So I threw down some egg whites, yeah. the egg white bites I, I had, I was right. I, my opinion is listen to that signal because yeah. your body's trying to tell you something. Maybe you trained really hard. Maybe there are resources that, that you're low on Yeah, and your body is trying to tell you something yeah. rather than having a structure that sure. you're living by like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yeah. which is a fabrication. 
listen to your body. And I like that. Can, yeah. you know, can I distill this just a little bit? Mm-hmm. Because we always want to make sure that there's clear takeaways, right? So, yeah, yeah. You know, we're talking about diet, and what I really, really love what you guys are saying is that this there's not one way, right? Not one way. There, there's, there's no prescription. Really, it's about listening yeah. to your body, yeah. being flexible. Um, I think we do need to be knowledgeable, right? Um, be aware of how many calories we're putting in. Um, look into intermittent fasting. Some benefits. There's a lot of science but, behind intermittent fasting. But, but we want to be careful. Now. We're not trying to point people to one specific no, you know, no, no, philosophy no. or whatever. And intermittent fasting may not be just by itself. Like you may do intermittent fasting with Whole30, or you may do yeah. intermittent fasting with keto, or like that's just an extra tool in the toolbox to it eat is. healthy. I like that. And too. it's significant. Intermittent fasting. So study that was done just a few years ago, um, and this was all diabetic men. And what they had them do is eat in a window. We call it window eating too. It's one of the ways it's like, so I'm going to eat within a six hour period, all my calories for the day. They did not change what they were eating. They were still eating the same garbage. And in, I think it was six weeks. That could have been eight weeks, but I think it was six weeks. It wasn't even quite two months. Um, A hundred percent of the men that were all diabetic had improved A1C and uh, fasting glucose. Just and they all eating. lost body fat That's without just, changing what they ate. They just changed just inter- when they ate. I like <laughs> that. That was it. I like that. All right, so that's, that's the how big it is. Yeah. yeah. What we put in our mouth. Now, we got to get on movement. Can I throw one more thing please, in there? Please, please. Yeah. So not only do we want to eat real food, <clears throat> but we want to also then focus on nutritious food, food that's dense. So it's not just calories because calories are different. I can show you 500 calories that look like donuts yeah. and I can show you 500 calories that look like some grilled salmon, mm-hmm. uh, even a couple of potatoes and you know an avocado. Yeah. And they're gonna do two different things biologically. Yeah, drastically different. Right, things, so people, yeah. cause calories, it's tough. Calories is, I don't think the best measurement tool for what we put inside our bodies, sure. I really don't. And I'm point. not a fan. And in 32 years, I've seen, you know, calorie counting. We focused on a macros, da, la, 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 la. I'm like, yes, it can be helpful, especially if you're trying to fine tune, like yeah, what, what you were talking that. about for a performance reason. But it's also cumbersome. If you're running around always, you know, focused on that. It's exhausting. Very few yeah. people are going to want to do That's that. That's what though. I was getting at. Yeah. Say that, that it's not fun. Right. People aren't <laughs> going to want to do that. So for the average person, it's maybe not going to get that deep into it. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some you know, things to live by? And I think yeah. that's so what you're eat about. nutritiously dense food. Now, here's where my biases are going to kick in right now right. because you, you brought up vegetarian, you brought up vegans, yeah. you know, and often people that are doing that have two motivations. One is uh, first, I want to be healthy. Second, like for vegans, it's like uh, I don't want to be cruel to animals, right? And I, and I get that. I think I respect all that, and I think that's noble, and we should be thoughtful about where we get our food. In fact, that's super important. If you're a mindful eater, know where your food comes from because I don't eat industrial food. I don't eat chickens that have been shoved in little containers. I don't eat cows that are being abused, you know, whatever you want to call it. I eat. I try to eat you know, grass fed. So they're more traditional ranching. I spend a little more because the food quality is better, but I also know that it's, it's better for everything, whether it's the environment and the animal itself. You know, I don't want to eat a stressed out animal. But what if somebody will say that I can't afford to eat like that? Like you can, you can, you can still go get your supermarket meat because it's still going to be nutritiously better. What about that $3 burger at uh, McDonald's? Yeah. So I'd avoid McDonald's because they process more. You got better choices. Freddy's, Carl Jr.'s, they actually use Oh, so you're not saying eliminate burgers? No. Oh, okay. Hell no. Well, you can get a lettuce wrap. I'll I'll share. Yesterday, my my wife, daughter, and I went for a bike ride. Freddy's was right around the corner. We're like, you guys want Freddy's? Sure. So we went and got lettuce wrap versions Yeah. Yeah. so that we, we got rid of the processed bread, which is junk, and it's full of all kinds of Yes. Right. Right. And we focused on the meat, which was highly nutritious. And it's very what's called bioavailable. Our bodies will use most of the protein and minerals and vitamins and all those things in there. It makes a difference. Guess we're going for lunch. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the bun is like the worst uh, part of those. The bun burgers. is the worst part. Well, no, I'm yeah. just happy because. High fructose corn syrup. Yeah. It's got GMO grain. Yeah. It's I'll got say, but what people expect is rules. Yeah. Right, and they expect this to be really strict, and that's why they don't want to do it. What you're doing now 
is you're liberating me, yeah. right? And probably everybody else listening to this, like, it doesn't have to be torture. Yeah, there's you a hierarchy. You can enjoy the food and you can <laughs> Yes. You can food should taste more. good. Yeah. Yeah. Food, we, we have sensors in our body that reward us for eating. So that should tell you something. Food should be pleasurable. We should enjoy it. It's fun to eat good okay, food. So we want to encourage people to look at this.